Well, let's look at a situation where Ampere's law fails, and this is looking at a capacitor where I have a current flowing through this shape in this flat part, but then I can extend this shape around the capacitor plate and have the shape go through the, in between the plates. Now, if I use Ampere's law, I will come up with a definite value for this flat surface because I have an enclosed current through that shape. But Stokes' theorem says that if I have a value with this contour, then I need to have the same value even though this shape is distorted. But we know that with a capacitor there is no current flow. No current flow between the plates. We only have an electric field. So here's how Maxwell got around this problem using the ideas of capacitors. Well, we know that the charge on the plates of a capacitor is equal to the capacitance times the voltage potential. And now I'm going to, for a parallel plate capacitor, this will work for any capacitor, but in this case parallel plate is the easiest for us to use. That's just epsilon naught times the surface area of the plate divided by the distance. And the potential is just the electric field times the distance between the plates. So if I simplify, the d's are going to cancel, and I have epsilon naught a times e. But the electric field times the area is just equal to the electric flux. Now I'm going to have this current I call a displacement current. It's been found that this is actually a bad term. There is no current that flows, but this was something that Maxwell modeled. Uh, they thought there was some kind of unknown current that flowed in between these plates, but it's been found that it doesn't happen. Uh, so, but they they still use this term displacement current, and that's just going to be equal to the derivative of the current or of the charge with respect to time on the plates, and that is just going to equal, well if I take the derivative of the left hand side I can take the derivative of the right hand side and that's just the derivative of the electric field flux and now I have a new enclosed current that I can put in here and we've modified Ampere's law to include both currents.
This is our modified Ampere's Law. Now, we said that with Faraday's Law we needed something changing. That In that case it was a magnetic field. And now we have with a magnetic field integral, line integral, we now have a relationship for a changing electric field. So now this is complete. We now have a complete picture of Ampere's Law. And the interesting thing is that because there are no charges in between these plates, then this process uh, can occur in the absence of any charges or magnetic poles. And this becomes very important uh, as we go and discuss how to use this in our daily lives.